Hi everybody, uh, Dr. Alizade here. I'm here with Annika. And uh, as the surgeon and the nurse for the practice, uh, we wanted to make sure we can take you through all the things to think about as you prepare yourself for surgery in our practice. Uh, Annika and I have been working together for now 13 years. 13 years. Been? 13 years now. Yeah. Uh, and in my practice for the past 20 years, having taken care of patients, thousands of patients in the past 20 years, I've learned a lot of little tricks that we want to share with you. But the most important is really on your end is to be prepared and know exactly what to expect for each stage of the operation. So here we go. You ready, Annika? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so when you come in for your pre-op visit, which is usually scheduled about three weeks, two to three weeks before surgery, we will give you all your paperwork that you need to bring to your doctor. You're going to get before and after instructions written so you can read them when you go home. Um, we, uh, well, let's start, with, uh, let's start with your pre-op visit. So when, you, when we decide what operation you're going to have, we're going to actually review what's going to happen is on the day that you come in, uh, Annika is going to meet with you to talk about the expectations. And of course, I'm going to review what the actual surgery is going to be like. We will actually review the, the areas that we're going to be working on, how it's going to work, what the strategy is, and what the steps are going to be. On your end, what we want to make sure is that you're super healthy, obviously. We want to make sure that you have a medical clearance, so we will ask your doctor to get a medical clearance. So make sure you make that uh, appointment ahead of time, you're aware of it. It will likely come down about a week before the operation. We want you to have seen your doctor. and then. With regards to your nutritionally, there's a number of things that we want to make sure that we're going to review with you, like blood thinners. Yeah, I mean, blood thing, thinners like Motrin, aspirin, ibuprofen, Aleve, naproxen, um, but also some vitamins, vitamin E, fish oil. Um, then there's herbs also that can thin your blood. Garlic. Uh, yeah. These are all, so the way these work is they block the ability of your platelets to form clots. So that's where we ask you to stop using all these medications. And there's a whole list we're gonna provide for you, but again, we wanna prepare yeah. you. This is something you wanna stop 10 days before so that your platelets are in good condition and your uh, bleeding is minimized, right? So everything that we do is to help optimize your recovery and have the best outcome. So there is actually a video that Annika has prepared which takes you through the expectation in terms of positioning and everything after surgery. But I want to simplify everything for you. So if you're having any kind of a facial surgery, we're either going to be putting splints. For example, if I do nasal surgery, I'm going to be putting a splint to protect it. Or if I'm doing facial surgery or facelift, I'm going to be putting a, a dressing on the outside to help splint things. If I'm doing breast surgery, we're putting a bra on, a bra right? On. And we, we want to make sure we minimize any kind of a movement so things can heal in place. And especially critical is that first week because you get swollen before you get better, right? So there's gonna be some soreness and some swelling. And the more you can splint that, the better your recovery is gonna be, right? So very important to sort of follow our instructions. For example, if we do breast surgery, I'm gonna ask you not to bring your elbow away from your body because that movement of bringing your elbow away from your body can potentially disrupt the stitches that we're gonna put in. All the stitches are internal and they're all absorbable but we want to make sure that you, you're literally splinting yourself to make sure the healing happens internally. Correct. Yes, and when you come in, we like you to come in for a post-op appointment within the first week of your surgery, which we will set up for you. And when you do come in here, we will give you the next steps to follow, whether we need to get another garment or any other steps that you need to follow after that. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, there's so much information right now on the internet with social media, your neighbors telling you, look at this site. We will take care of you from start to finish. The most important thing for, for you to know is that we have an entire team here that's dedicated to doing this. As, I, as you heard from us, we have a collective experience of over 30 years now, literally taking care of thousands of patients just like you. So the most important thing is for us to create a team together, right? The team is gonna to be together. We're gonna to coach you through it. You don't have to worry about how to manage dressings or scar care or what the next step is gonna be in terms of activity. We will take you through that. But we do want you to look at our site, look at the information beforehand, so that when you come in to have your assessment done, you're prepared mentally for what the next steps are gonna be. Yeah, um, we will definitely take you through every step. I think that's the most people ask, when can I shower? When can I do this? 
Um, after you go in from surgery, most of the times we tell you if you can sponge bathe, it's great because then when you come in, we will take off if there's any dressings or garments that need to come off and we take a look at it then. Um, but, um, but by the way, our, our most of the dressings that we do, that I do, yeah. are I either have a clear plastic dressing on or I have glue. So there's really nothing to do. There's no dressings. They're all, you can visualize everything. Everything is seen because we want to make sure that when you communicate with us, we actually get to see what things look like, right? So there's nothing hidden in terms of the post-op recovery. You can actually, as Annika said, you can get, get things wet. Um, but of course, you, sponge bath is better because it's more limited. Uh, but some procedures, we may tell you that you can take a shower the very next day. You can go out, you can take a shower. With regards to activity, the general sort of a concept on activity is the first 24 hours we want you to be at home and recover from anesthesia related things. The first week we want you to minimize activity, uh, not in terms of, you know, you can go out and about, but we don't want you to be doing exercise. The first three weeks uh, are the time where you're sort of doing daily activities, but not exercise or physical activity. And by six weeks, pretty much everybody gets back to what they were doing before surgery. So you have full activity. Right. I know it's a common question about driving too. Uh, definitely the first 24 hours after anesthesia, there's no driving at all. Uh, but we usually say that when you're off pain medication, it's a good guidance that if you need to take a short ride or maybe come in and see us, that that's okay if you finish your pain medication when you're no longer on that. Yeah, and some of the surgeries that we do, you actually don't have a lot of pain. Let's right. say if it's doing a facelift, or eyes, there's not a lot of pain, it's just swelling. Some of the surgeries that we do, for example, with abdominal surgery, we actually put a numbing in there that keeps you numb for about the first three days. Which is great. Yeah, so each of them sort of have their own sort of mechanism to keep you comfortable. But again, everything that we say is just from a safety perspective to make sure that you know it's the safest possible outcome for you to be able to take you through it. Yeah, I think... Um other than that, that pretty much covers everything yeah I mean the, the most common things after procedures we still tend to give an antibiotic for for about a week after surgery yeah the antibiotics are really there because we may sometimes we may have a drain or uh, and we want to make sure that we're covering the bacterial component of the of the body if there is a potential ex, uh, uh, introduction of bacteria so that's why you're on antibiotics we limit that as much as we can because antibiotics are good, but they can also be bad. With regards to, uh, let's talk about sort of what your expectations are with regards to pain medication and some of the other things. Well, we do give a prescription for pain medication for everyone, just uh, basically everyone, unless somebody has really requests not to have any, just in case you need it. And most of the times we prescribe Percocet. And you can take one or two every four to six hours, but I go over everything with everybody. I give everybody a post-op phone call the following day after surgery, where I sometimes FaceTime or WhatsApp with patients. They get to ask all kinds of questions at that time. And I usually help them through, I manage them through that. But usually it's the first couple of days, and then maybe you take something for nighttime, and then you'd be off. Within a week, most patients are definitely not taking any more pain medication. They have switched to Tylenol, extra strength by that time. Um, it's yeah, individual. And, and last but not least, uh, you know, I want to make sure you know when you sign up for the surgery, uh, the day of surgery, we want you to really not have any commitments. We want you to start getting into that mode when you're ready for the operation. The night of, you know, have a very simple meal. Yeah. Then nothing to eat or drink after midnight, mm -hmm. no matter what. No jewelry, uh, no body piercing. No nice. jewelry or body piercing. Make sure you, you shower and, you know, make sure everything is clean. If there's an area where there's hair, we may ask you and we'll tell you that to shave that particular area. Right. So it makes it easier for us. Make sure that whoever is going to accompany you knows about the operation, the plan, and they've watched this video that we're sharing with you right now. So they're a part of it. It's really important for someone not to step in and be overwhelmed by the experience. I know exactly what to expect. So please share this videos with them. Because remember, they're the ones that are gonna be managing and they're gonna actually physically take you home. They're gonna put you in bed. So you want them to be comfortable with the whole process. Right, um, wear nice, comfortable clothing when you go to a surgery center, something that you can easily just slip into bed when you get home. No and makeup. No. Certainly no, none of those eyelashes, please. I know, no eyelashes. Um, and uh, I think just comfortable clothes so you can just get into bed when you get home. Uh, drink plenty of fluids when you get home. Not necessarily just water. 
anything. Sometimes if you don't eat much, you might need a little sugar. Make sure you have something in your stomach. Yeah, if and, and plenty of fluids egg. the day before, so you're well hydrated yeah, too. That's very important. Hydrate the day before, yeah. absolutely. Um, and by the way, here's our definition of hydration. We like you to literally have, you know, three full bottles or at least half a gallon of water for two days before surgery. And make sure you're going through that and you're finishing it. That's enough water to go into your body. Right? Make sure that you've literally finished that container because a lot of our patients we notice that are running around, doing working, doing things with kids, they're dehydrated. So the, one of the greatest ways to recover fast from anesthesia is to be well hydrated. Yeah, and exercise the day before surgery is usually not a good idea. Yeah, it dehydrates you, you and it gets your muscles, you know, are, are not, they need to rest the day before surgery. Um, so you're going to do great. We're going to be with you every step of the way and looking forward to seeing our pre-op visit.